The Briggs & Stratton generator, or more specifically the GC1030 series controller, uses a communication standard called RS-485 for its Modbus communications. And Modbus is the protocol that Genmon uses to talk to the generator and receive all of the uh, parameters that the, the software monitors and, and outputs. Uh, RS-485 is an amazing protocol. It's been around for a long time. It's fairly robust and mature. Uh, the one challenge is the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a native RS-485 interface on it. The good news is that brings a lot of solutions uh, available to, to solve the problem. Uh, the one on the left is a expansion board for the Raspberry Pi. They call it a hat, and that just attaches to the Raspberry Pi. And uh, you see the green thing on the right side of the board over here is a uh, terminal bus where you just connect the three wires, the A, the B, and the ground for the um, you know communication between the generator and the Raspberry Pi. The device on the right is a converter type device. It, it's a, more of a bridge between the RS-485 and the um, network, and then the Raspberry Pi can connect to this device over TCP IP. Which device is right for your setup depends on a lot of factors. The hat board, expansion board, tends to get a little more technical. Uh, Genmon, when you install it, does an absolutely amazing job in configuring the port in solving some of the common configuration uh, issues with the onboard or expansion board. Um, but if there's any troubleshooting or you know settings that need to change, it, it does tend to get a bit technical. Uh, the device on the right is super easy to set up and start talking to your generator. The uh, minor challenge with that is the Raspberry Pi is polling this device and querying it every second. So there are some network considerations in how you deploy it and, and how everything is set up. But those are probably easier to overcome if you're not as familiar with the Linux and Raspberry Pi type commands uh, than the uh, expansion board. So you have a couple options as well how to uh, set all of these up and it, this is showing the converter device it doesn't you know this this applies to the raspberry pi to a large extent as well um, the icon over here on the left side this is the terminal bus that is on the generator itself um, you connect to the um, cellular side of the device here the wi-fi side even though it looks the same it has the same letters and numbers on it, it does not output the same data. So you need to connect to the cellular side of the terminal block. The RS-485 standard allows for the, the cable to be run as, uh, you know, hundreds of feet. I, I believe it's a thousand feet or more where it'll still be able to, you know, functionally communicate to the generator. So it gives you a lot of options if your Wi-Fi signal near the generator is not strong or if... Um, I, I live in Florida, so if the you know heat and humidity is not something you want to expose all of this electronic equipment to, you can put that inside of the house and then power this device or the Raspberry Pi based on a AC adapter, right? You're plugging it right into the utility power, into the wall. And then run three wires, a ground and A and B. And just to clarify here, B goes to B, A goes to A. It's super easy to configure this. Um, so then you can put this device wherever you know you you want to right wherever you can run the wires to inside your house or in your basement or you know whatever uh, the other option is to power this device or the raspberry pi directly from the 12 volt system on the generator there are if you you know search on amazon or something there's there's all kinds of uh, usb to uh, battery adapters where you can plug this right into the battery of the generator and power the raspberry pi or this type of device has a, um, a dc input terminal bus as well so you can run a couple wires you know, right from 12 volt and ground into this side and in that case you can ignore the uh, the ground if you choose to go that way um, or you don't know what you're doing yet and you know need more time to decide but want to buy the, the hardware, make sure the 
Raspberry Pi device, the hat device that you're looking at has the three terminal um, connections on it. So, some only have an A and a B and then expect the Raspberry Pi to be powered by the, um, you know, the, the generator or the device that you're communicating with. And that will limit your deployment options. You'll have to, you know, put the Raspberry Pi near the generator if you, if you go that way. So with that, just finishing out a little bit on the configuration, if you decide to go with a converter device like the USR W630, there's a couple settings that you need to do once you connect to that device. This is the uh, web interface to uh, configure it and set it up. And again, really easy to do. You plug it in, it broadcasts its network ID and you can just connect to it that way. You don't even necessarily need to put it on your home network unless you want to. Um, uh, so in here, in the uh, UART setting, they call it, you'll want to do transparent mode. That gets the best performance between the Raspberry Pi and this device. If you pick a device that doesn't have transparent mode, Genmon does support Modbus over TCP, but the um, you know there's additional checksums and overhead into you know wrapping the Modbus packet into a, a TCP packet a second time. So the transparent mode allows direct serial communication over TCP IP. Um, we mentioned in a few other spots you need to get some of the data from the generator directly, the baud rate and parity. So you'll need to configure it to look a little bit like this, or exactly like this, 9600-8E1. And that will allow all of the communication you need between the generator and the device to allow the Raspberry Pi to connect to the device. You need to, in the network setting down here, set up this device as a Modbus server. Note the port, you can make that port whatever you want, you just need to know what it is, and note the IP address of the device. In Genmon, you'll enter that same information on the settings page, enable serial over TCP IP, pick the IP address of the converter device and the port. And if you use the transparent mode, nothing else needs to be done. If your device does not support transparent mode and needs Modbus over TCP, you'll enable this setting. So hope this was helpful and saved some of the pain that I went through. But if you have any questions, let us know.